Well, shalom to you, Minister Nomalanga Chiyani. It's good to have you on this conversation of the Believer School of Discipleship and in particular, our Leadership Edge Fundamentals conversation. How are you doing? Good evening, Apostle. Thank you so much um, for having me. Thank you for the time that you've given me to be on the on this on this discussion conversation this mm -hmm. uh, this evening. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I'm well. Um, thank God. Um, no issues to complain about. Life right. is more important right now. Great stuff. Great stuff. Thank you. I do want us to reflect a little bit on, on the program, the Leadership Fundamentals. But before we go there, let me ask you to do a, a quick introduction of yourself. Who is um, Joyce uh, Gianni? Okay. Um, I'm Nomalanga Joyce Gianni. Um, I stay in Rodeport, um, Mindalo, Kudasdo. Um, I am currently working for the city of Johannesburg Municipality is the assistant director in sport and recreation. I manage a region in the Rodeport area. That is my area of responsibility. Um, I have about 67, 67 plus staff members that I'm currently leading um, at this point in time. Um, yeah, I think that's how, yeah, yes, that's, that's that. Now, now. now, obviously as, as a leader, um, this program would, obviously have had an appeal on you. But how did you first, how did you come to know about the Leadership Edge Fundamentals? I'm currently doing the course uh, at BSOD right. um, that I was referred to by a friend. Yeah, so when I saw the advert on the group, I thought, yo, let me try this out. Let me see what this is all about. Um, one can never learn enough. One can never say, I know enough. So I thought, let me quickly register. And I think I was number one to raise my hand because I was just so eager to learn what this is all about, especially after I'd seen the material of the course that we're currently doing with BSORT. That's yeah. how I came to join the, the, the course, Apostle. Great stuff and congratulations for having come on. But now you, you've done the program, you've done the fundamentals. What have you harvested from this program? What has it meant for you in person and in your capacity as a leader? Yeah, I think, Apostle, more than anything, you know, when you lead um, 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 in the workplace and you get home and there's other, you obviously belong to a ministry, you belong to other groups as well that you do find yourself at, at, at leadership position at the time. One is tempted to lead differently, to say, now I'm in the workplace, I must be hard, I must be this, I must be that, instructions must be done. One of the things that I have gotten, have taken away from the course was the issue of servanthood, that I am more of a servant than a leader, more of a servant than a boss, because I have a responsibility to these people more than just anything. I have a responsibility for them to grow, I have a responsibility for them to become a better person. And the fact that in one of the slides, we were taught um, about the different leaders, uh, Nehemiah, Moses, um, I think need to name a few of those that I remember. And one is then able to position themselves and identify in fact with one of, of, of the people from the Bible to say, okay, this is how these people did it. And most, what makes it even easier is that when you know who you are in Christ, when who you when you know your position and understand who you are in Christ, and you have the manual that is the Bible, it just makes the, the role easier. It, it does not become a burden anymore, but it is more of I have a a a a a a, 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 a route to follow. I have an example rather to follow, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if Jesus Christ did it this way, then I have a pattern that I have for I, I can follow. I have a manual to run to, which is the Bible, to make my responsibility as a leader, regardless where I am, you know, and the fundamental fact that one is not in leadership by choice, but it is an assignment that one has been sent to do by Elohim. And he has his standards, he has his roles, his rules, he has his ways that one is expected to then perform in a certain way. I think that's the, that's what I took from from the course that I cannot separate myself anyway. I have a, I have a mandate from Elohim to lead His people. I have a mandate to be a servant to the people that He has called me to serve at that particular time, and one must do so the way Elohim would lead or direct based on the manual that is the Bible. 
th th this is this is an amazing reflection of, of your takeaways. And, and I do want us to, to just talk about the practical element of it. Now that you've got these insights that you've harvested, um, what practical examples are there of how you are now implementing or adjusting your leadership style with the understanding of servanthood yeah. as a leader? Yeah, I think, uh, Apostle, it has changed the whole perspective. Um, you know, uh, fortunately, we have just started now, I, I can say fully going back. Um, it's the 1st of July, tomorrow, beginning of a new financial year. So our, our new financial year starts in July, ends in June. So with the beginning of the financial year, one of the plans is that every month when we have our meetings, we must have a spiritual session that we really focus just on the word of God. And I thank God that be it as much as the South Africa is a, is a democratic country, everybody have a right, has a right to believe wherever they believe. The stuff that has been um, allocated under me, 100% of them are Christians. So it just makes the job much easier. And funny enough, you should say that because the other day, um, after the course, I even thought, you know, maybe we need to even have a lunch hour prayers because we do have lunch hour. And in most cases, you know what lunch hour means, we sit and gossip. So how about converting one of the days when we know on a certain day, instead of lunch hour and doing other, talking about other things, let's then have that one hour of 30 minutes of our lunch doing devotions, allocate times for each person so that it's not just one person that gets to grow, but all of us get an opportunity. We have a rooster. We know next week, Wednesday, it's Joyce. Next week, Wednesday, it's, 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 it's Michael and so on. So that it also affords them an opportunity, even those that don't necessarily make time to read the Bible, when they know it's them tomorrow and next week, it then forces them as well indirectly to then go back, go and engage. But and in all of that, remember, we trust that the Holy Spirit will then do what he needs to do. Ours is just to plant the seed and say, next week it's you, please come and lead us with devotion on Wednesdays. And, and, and that um, um, is one of the, I think, First, first things I'm going to implement now, starting um, July with our new, in our new financial year, with the head office, and also encourage it in other areas because I have about 30 facilities that I'm 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 responsible for. So if I plant it at head office, you know I'm I'm believing God that it will it will go down. But in our meetings already, Apostle, all my meetings we open with a prayer. If there are issues that I know are burning in the region, I arrive early in the meeting, set the scene and just make sure that the Holy Spirit is, is in charge of the place before even the first person walks in. So that by the time they walk in, they're already captured. Then before we start the meeting, we then open with a prayer. And then at the end, we take grace after the meeting. I'm, I'm fascinated by what I am hearing because part of our target is to reach about 10,000 people in the next three months. We want to have this course put in the hands of 10,000 people across industries, you know, so that wow. that shift is brought about for leaders, but also for those who are already established in a kingdom culture of leadership, that there's a refreshing and a revival of these biblical principles in how we lead in the home base, at work, in the marketplace, in government, just across society. And I'm happy to hear that you are convicted to implement this to that extent. And um, maybe maybe to the marketplace and to government, now that you've, you've really um, have been impacted by this, what is your message to them? What is your message to them? You know, my message to them, Apostle, would be, you know, try this out, do it. You know, the worst that can happen is to you doing it and not being convicted. But I'm sure that the, 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 the minute you get to, to, to go through the slides, you listen to the presentation, you also realize that I, I do not have to carry this load of 60 people that I'm carrying on my own. In fact, there is, I have a helper that is actually willing to assist me. The better understanding of how certain things can be done, how better I can take a certain decision, where I can get the wisdom that I need to take some of these decisions, Take, make it, take it, make it, take it a try. Take it, a, take a try. Um, do this course if you, when you you get a chance to, when it's available to, when it's exposed to you, when it's it's, it's advertised to you, you will just realize how much lighter um, being a leader is than 
what we've always known in the past, that it is this heavy responsibility with all these people over your shoulders. But you have an example. We have Jesus Christ. He has done it before. He has left us with a manual on how to do it. It will just make your work, your work easier and worthwhile, especially when it's life-changing, especially when you start to see people's lives change change that will be more worth than the paycheck at the end of the month fantastic fantastic yes you're right there is a blueprint there is a model there's a kingdom mm -hmm. culture there's yep. a constitution with all the principles that can cause every leader to succeed regardless mm -hmm. in which sphere of life are they leading thank you so much for your time and i must make this announcement that we are about to launch level two of what you've experienced and it's just, it's probably to be mind boggling. And I invite you and everybody else to come on board, partake of level two, it's going to be life transforming. Thank you for the difference that you are making in society. I pray that the Lord will continue to use you even in greater scale. And um, for your time and for your influence, thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Apostle. We thank God for your life. We thank God for your calling. We thank God for your purpose, and um, because um, you, we, 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 we are, we are, we are learning a lot. Um, we thank God for you as well. Thank you so much for having me, Apostle. I'm we honored to be part of the program. Yeah. We praise the Lord. Shalom. Shalom.